Here with uh, David Griffin, I, I want to start with something that I think a lot of fans don't really get to see, and you were talking a little bit about this in your media interview before. How do you evaluate a season for an NBA team? Not necessarily this team in general, but just as your job, you know, at the end of the year, you said it's time for change. What makes you kind of come to those type of conclusions? How do you evaluate to kind of create next steps for that sort of thing? Well, I think obviously results always dictate outcome in a lot of ways. But I also think the energy of a group and, and feeling sort of the pulse of the group is important. And because we had been together for a while, we were really able to learn what it meant and what we felt we needed, mm -hmm. as opposed to just having sort of knee-jerk reaction to things. So when you're going to do something that's a little bit of a sea change and something that's going to be significant, you want to be doing it with as much information as you can have. And we certainly felt like we had that because of the continuity. And that led you to trading for DeJounte Murray. What did you see in him as a player that adds to this group? Why was like that the move that you decided to go with? I think his ability to be a leader first and foremost and an alpha in mm -hmm. the clutch was something that was really important to us. Um, Jake, you probably know all the numbers better than I do around our, our clutch play, but it was it was certainly subpar and something that we wanted to, to take a shot at really addressing. At the same time, we wanted to do it in the form of a player who's a high-level defensive piece who makes other people better. And so I think where we got fortunate in the DeJounte situation was he's probably more alpha than we realized, <laughs> but he's every bit all of the things we needed in terms of skill set. Is that like when, when you're evaluating the season, one of the areas you see room for improvement is winning those close games? Because it feels like that could have added three, four, five wins, which puts you in an entirely different scenario than you were going through the playing tournament. Well, when you're in a historically good Western Conference, you can't be historically bad at closing out fourth quarters. <laughs> um, and, and we were, unfortunately. Um, we did not win enough of the clutch moments. And and frankly, we didn't win a game in the fourth quarter where we trailed entering the oh, period. 0 22. <laughs> to win 49 games and be 0 and 22 when you're trailing entering the fourth is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Those are really the hallmarks of a much better team in terms of win-loss record. But because we're in the West, you've got such a fine margin for error. You don't have time to wait for normalization and regression to the mean, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to act in a way to try to improve it. But I do think some of those numbers were, were anomalies as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll keep it on the theme of evaluating, you know, how do you evaluate a coaching staff or a head coach? I think that's tough for fans to kind of understand what to really look for. Fans might point to the rotations or timeout usage, but we only see a small little bit of what goes on with all of that. So when you're looking at the season and planning for the next year, like how do you evaluate a coaching staff with that sort of thing? So the spirit in your locker room tells you most of what you need to know. If, if you're growing and improving every day and building the kind of galvanized spirit that you need, you're probably heading in a good direction. And when you lose the room and when the spirit's different and wrong, you need to change it. You know, Larry Bird believed that you change your coach every four years no matter what happens, regardless. Mm -hmm. Go to the conference finals, doesn't matter. We're, we're not that group. Um, I, I do think there's a, a spirit that you can recognize in a room. And I think, again, our staff has had to deal with something that very few have, and that is incredible talent and expectation and injury all along the way. And they've always found a way to pivot. They've always found a way to keep the balls in the air. That's a remarkable characteristic and a trait that we recognize and appreciate. Willie and his staff have done a really, really good job of just ma managing a very difficult situation. It's, it's hard to work on rotations when you don't know who's going to play from night to night. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you said there was a level of trust between the organization and Brandon Ingram. How did that develop? Is that part of kind of like the spirit of the locker room you were talking about? You know, to go into the season with him on that expiring contract, and it doesn't seem like there's any concern about that. Really does speak to that level of trust you all have with each other. Yeah, I mean, I think from the beginning, all of Brandon's actions were to prove that he was committed to this organization. Um, when we went through the process of signing him to the deal we did, he did five years with no option. Mm -hmm. That's a level of trust and commitment that very few players make at, at that point in time. And he made it because he, he wanted to be here. And so, again, judging him by his actions, the way he's always dealt with our team and the way he's always dealt with his role within our, our team, Brandon's not a me guy. Mm -hmm. Brandon's very much a we guy. He played at the end of last year to try to help carry us on a knee that probably he shouldn't have played on. But he knew that we needed him to try. 
And more importantly, the message it sent for him to try was meaningful in our locker room. And Brandon's about those things and he always has been. So in the situation we're in contractually, ordinarily, that wouldn't be a comfort you have, but we have that with Brandon. And then Bryson talked a little bit about Zion Williamson and seeing more buy-in from here. You know, it's year six. You, you'd imagine there's just kind of a natural progression of that, but it seems like there's just much more harmony with him and the organization than there has been before. What's kind of led to this moment, it feels like? Well, I, I think in terms of what led to it, it's probably more of a Zion question. I, I do think he was really bothered by our in-season tournament results. I think he felt like he left a lot of meat on the bone there. I think he took a lot of responsibility and accountability for that. He's a father now. Mm -hmm. um, there have been several things that have led to the maturation process and sort of the um, exponential growth in his maturation. And I, I think we've seen that. And you know, my experience in the NBA over years this is gonna be my 30th season my experience in the league has been that maturation is either a smolding fire or a brush fire and in zion's case it seems to be something of a brush fire so that's exciting yeah it seems it's almost like zion 2.0 or yeah. 3.0 maybe in yeah. a sense here as he's that's kind well of said yeah go gone through his career so two more things for you and we'll get you out of here uh, for you. When you look at upgrading the roster and kind of navigating the new collective bargaining agreement, you know, given the roster, the, the salaries on the roster, you have four guys making 30 plus million dollars. You're kind of lacking some of that like mid tier, I think you would call it 10 to 20 million dollar salary. Is that something you're you're aware of when trying to maybe look for trades or think about potential future trades? Should we bring in more tradable salary, something like that? How do you kind of navigate those processes? Well, where we've been fortunate is that we've been really successful at finding players at minimum, by way of example, that were rotation and key contributors. Mm -hmm. And we've had players on rookie scale that are key contributors. Sort of like in the NFL, when your quarterback is on rookie scale, yeah. you can add more talent. We've been able to add more talent on the high end because of what Bryson and his staff have done in terms of adding to the sort of the 8, 9, 10, 11 part of our roster. It's given us more bandwidth to be a little more leveraged on the front end. Um, but obviously you have to find a way to keep this together in a sustainable way. Golden State, by way of example, never had to make a decision. They gave every single person max, they kept everybody, that's mm -hmm. it. That's not where we live and that's not where the CBA is now. So we probably will have to make some decisions. And at the same time, we hope we can make it with more information about where we really are. And we hope we make it within the framework of a winning organization. And final thing for you, what, what's one thing you want people to know about this team that maybe kind of isn't talked about enough when it comes to the group you have here? Well, that's a great question. Um, I don't know that I can answer that. Okay. Um, I, I think the thing that we harp on a lot and people just don't understand it, we've got an incredibly unique locker room. We've got a really different group of guys in terms of not having anybody that makes this about themselves. And I think that's special. And unfortunately, because the Western Conference is so good, everybody's sort of a prove it to me sort of a, a person. And I get that. And at the same time, you miss a lot of the joys of this team when you don't lean into who they are. The joy they show on the court when they're doing what they do is special and mm -hmm. something that I just don't want people to take for granted. I mean, you see that when, you know, I've had scouts and things like that tell me, like, look at the bench when guys score and how excited everyone gets. And that's important to see, like, are they up cheering? And it seems like this group really does kind of buy into all of that. They do. And at the same time, I, I think we, we were handed to pretty good by a team in Oklahoma City that has even more of that. Mm -hmm. So what we have isn't unique. And if you don't continue to grow it, you get caught. And so I'm, I'm excited about where we could potentially go. And I'm, I'm also excited about the fact that this is an important year for us. All right, Griff, thank you very much. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm.